You know, there are many ways to care for our mental health, but one that may not have crossed your mind mm -hmm. is improvisation training. And joining us now with more on how improv can help cope with uncertainty and manage anxiety is the founder of the Laughing Academy, Kim Green Heller. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you so much for having me so here. Fun. This is interesting because, as Amy was just saying, that you would think standing up and trying to improvise would bring on so much anxiety that you would just might be collapsed under the fear, but this is not really what's going on here. No, and I think part of it is, um, it's the improv training, really, that it enables you to get up and do that. But the improv training is really life skills training. Okay. And what you are facing is uncertainty. That's where anxiety has its base, right? Mm -hmm. I'm uncertain of the future and what will happen. Well, how about you and I get up there on stage and do a scene with no script, get up there and perform? Well, there's tons of uncertainty. Dipping in and again, again and again to a safe space to practice that okay. is where we ease the anxiety. And the reason it's a safe space, the rules of improvisation, which include being present in the moment, mm -hmm. which include embracing our own mistakes, and which include saying yes and to our partners. Well, that's, I think, the part of the thing that people don't understand and which give them so much anxiety things don't always go right. As a matter of fact, a lot of times they do go wrong and you gotta live in the moment. I always say, in a world where nothing goes as planned, yes. um, <laughs> the genius isn't in the planning, it's in your grace to handle mm -hmm. what happens. And we say literally their mistakes are opportunities. I just watched a young student make a mistake in a performance early in the game, a game we might play later, um, called the alphabet game. She called a character, the same character, two different names. And once she realized that mistake, she began calling that character a different name at every opportunity. Ah. And it became the joke of the scene. It became the thing. And the other player starts using it. You know, you never could decide what to call me, mom. You know, and so now we've got something the scene is about. Yeah. All based on one mistake that we didn't run in, away from. Oh that. my goodness, and so you point out that it's not just adults, this can be for kids as well. So we say that we teach ages five to 105. Okay. okay. In all honesty, my youngest student is indeed five. Um, our oldest is about 68. But yeah, we teach everybody. And I think going in early, I have a high school troupe who started with me in kindergarten. Oh. Um, or a number of them started with me in kindergarten. And it's that confidence then, you just see it in everything they do. Yeah. I personally don't train people to be performers. I train them to be more fulfilled citizens. So watching how they employ what they've learned everywhere, that how it helps them have the courage to try new things. I just oh, wow. want to go there and watch kindergartners do this because they say I have two kindergartners myself and they are the funniest humans on the planet already. Wow. <laughs> yes, they will say the darndest yes, things. Yes, they right? will. <laughs> All right, so let's go through some of these exercises yeah. that you may take your class through. Um, or, like the Jamie, alphabet game? You want to yeah. try that? Let's awesome. try that. That is absolutely one okay. of my favorites to teach. Um, so here's what's going to happen is we're going to do a three-person scene. Okay. The three of us. But every line of the scene needs to begin with a subsequent letter of the alphabet. Okay. So all we need is a location. Where is somewhere we, we might want to go? Bali. Mm. Oh, awesome. So we're going on vacay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So if I start, I, my sentence must start with the letter A. So, um, all right. We're finally here. Let's unpack and hit the beach. Boys, it's a beautiful place. Let's go get cocktails. Oh. Uh, cocktails, cocktails, that's all you want to do is cocktails. Can we have a little cake? Can we have some candy? Something else? Don't you remember what la happened last time we had too many cocktails? Ooh. Either I remember or I don't, but I had too many cocktails to remember. <laughs> Forgetting is better, because if you remember, you will never do it again, you know? Good thing, too, because you guys tend to forget, don't you? Whoever where we were. Well, <laughs> and we don't, do, we, do we want to do the whole alphabet? Or? No, let's do the yeah. whole alphabet. Okay. So I, but I want to tell you a little bit about why I love that game okay, and okay. why I really love teaching that game. Okay. Um, so I told you yes and is the most important tenant. And that means when you initiate something, I agree to what you've initiated. I don't have to say yes to what your character is saying. I have to say yes to your creative idea. Uh -huh. And I build on it. But what has to happen first is I have to say yes and to myself. Mm. And when we freeze in this game, the alphabet game, we are more than likely thinking of a word that starts with, we all know words for yeah, all those yeah, letters, yeah. right? Sure, sure, sure. But we're thinking that wasn't a good idea. Maybe this would be it. So we're already saying no to ourselves. Oh. Brainstorming and creativity and creation and the furthering of anything we do comes with us saying yes to our own idea. And here's another one real quick. Uh, my young students always teach them, and this is an old improv tenant, before you go on stage, tap one another on the back and say, I got your back, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a philosophy. We're out there to make each other look good. You guys, your job every day is yeah, to yeah. make someone you just met look good. Uh -huh. uh, so one time on stage, I'm watching two second graders play that game, and they're nailing it. They're at like S or T, and one of them locks up. She freezes. 
and her partner reaches over and touches her on the arm and just goes, I got your back. Oh. And then they go on and they succeed. And it's two things to me. It's that that girl knew to, to say that and knew to do that. Um, the other girl knew that just having someone there is enough. But also, that one friend knew, because um, usually they'll whisper, here's what you should say. Oh, uh, yeah. She didn't. She goes, all you need to know is I'm here. And that is a better way to be a friend. So when we're talking oh. about mental health, these, these are the places we see it, yeah. live in action. You don't necessarily need so to solve cool. their problem. Yeah. Just yeah. let them know I'm here, whatever you decide. Thank okay, you so much for joining so us. The Laughing Academy is in Glenview on Glenview Road. Check them out at the Laughing Academy or thelaughingacademy.com. Thank you so much. That was, that was really cool. fun.